Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Cobb Diaries. At the moment I am riding a poly and I am just warming her up for some jumps. I really hope everybody is out there staying safe, um, keeping clean, sanitising and wearing masks when you're going out. The sooner we all do this and the sooner we all keep ourselves to ourselves and stay indoors, the quicker this virus will do one. I've cut a lot of the warm-up out just because obviously I can understand that's very boring for a lot of you. So we're just walking around and in a minute we'll be doing some trot work, getting her nice and warm. The jumps that are set up are two foot three and two foot. Two larger ones being the pink one and the second jump of the double as you're looking from it this way so the one that's furthest away from the camera. Now here Polly was anticipating the turn which is why I made her walk right up to the fence in a straight line. It might look really odd um, but I just wanted her to be listening to me rather than autopilot. Just the simple little things like that just to get your horse to really listen to you. around and obviously I did a few laps before I changed the rain but I've just cut it for the editing okay now I wasn't going to go over the double straight away so I just went over that second one just because I haven't jumped Polly that high at all, I don't think. If not, it certainly have been a while. And it's the first time we've really properly tried double jumps, so I wanted to make sure she was definitely ready and you know we could both achieve that jump together. pretty well, she stayed pretty straight which was quite good, she knew what I wanted and I think she did perfectly really, a little bit wonky that time but we made it, that's what counts on the screen things, no we knocked that one down but that's okay, I didn't put her off and now doing a single Again, I think this is the first time I've jumped her this high. I'm not really sure, you might have to go back through my videos. But it's certainly been a while. And here, Minnie had just arrived at the yard, so she very kindly put the jumps up for me and while she's doing that I actually got Polly to go sideways over the log but the log is by no means straight as you can see so she really had to use her brain um, and I have to go forwards and backwards a little bit as well as sideways um, to clear the log without touching it and yeah I was super impressed she did this pretty much flawlessly um, and took her time to sort of figure out where her feet needed to be And here we cleared the first one and we stayed in a canter and did the second one and I just was think that was perfect and I ended the session there because that was literally the perfect one. Now we're hacking Pandora and I think Mini Me is riding Poppy in this video. The sheep were everywhere on this day. It's just like loads of them in the road. Like always during the summer, loads of people out and about on the bridge jumping off into the river. 
No one would believe there was a deadly pandemic going on. It's fair enough going up onto the moors, but come on, just don't... Don't all group together like that, it's just no need for it. But anyway, I will stop talking about the coronavirus. So we're having a nice counter up through here. I made Pandora trot for quite a way up this hill while Minnie Me and Poppy counted on. Uh, just to get her to not want to rush off if the other horses rush off. Um, I'd quite like my horse to be listening to me rather than doing what she would instinctively do and run with the other horses. That's just a safety point for you from me. It was quite a long ride, it was about three hours, which is a long ride for us. Um, but in these lovely summer months, it is lovely to do it, and I can't wait to get back to it again. Now that log is massive, like I did not jump up with any of mine, we just went over this end. Um, yeah, Pandora's being very strong, and I was not keen to be jumping with her. She was only being strong because she wasn't quite sure about the really long ride. I've not actually taken her here before. And here we had to go in between these bushes, which was quite cool. It was a good little thing to get her to listen to me. And one coming up is I had to bend down to go underneath that branch. She also had to pick her feet up to go over a branch at near enough at the same time, which was awkward, but it was really good for, for her, really. Trot through the forest. I do wish there was woods closer to us. Like we have to hack an hour to get over there. And she shook her ears off here. It's just really inconvenient. I couldn't get them to go back on because they are a little bit tight fitting on her so we did basically just ride home like that and she's got her ears back on there um, I got off and did a gate it's a really awkward gate that um, doesn't like to stay open sort of push it uphill and it just snaps back on you all the time. So I fixed her ears and then we had a nice canter. This is like one of the longest canters I've ever had on Pandora. There we go, it starts now. Oh, no, she's trying. And now she's cantering. Um, Pandora gets really edgy in canter. Like, she's edgy in trot, but when you ask her to canter for a period of time, like, not just half a dozen to a dozen strides. She sort of gets that feeling like, should I be still be cantering? Like normally we've stopped by now and she's just really unsure. She's just really green to ride, even though I've been riding her since she was five. And again, the ears have gone. <laughs> They're just dangling under her chin. But yeah, she just rides like a really green horse. And to be honest, I don't really mind. Oh God, these cows were scary. They were all young and they just wanted to play and yeah. And I ended this segment of the video here. As you can see, loads of people, it was absolutely ridiculous. And now I'm doing some liberty with Myrna. We start off with the line on literally just for this section, just to do some circles with. So she to get her mind ready for me to ask her to do this at liberty because she does find the circles hard she finds anything hard without the line if it requires to be a little distance away from me she used to really struggle sticking next to me as well um, but I have left all of I'm gonna say the mistakes I'm gonna leave all of the untidy bits in this video and explain what's going on so now we've got the head column lead rope off and we're playing the stick to me game. This is her good side with me on her left. And as you can see, no problem there whatsoever. 
and I turned that into a circle and for the first circle of the day I only did half a circle and give her lots of praise. Now I'm on her right hand side and you can see she's a little bit further away from me but that's okay and then I tried to turn it into a circle again keeping her in the trot and she did but she did go a little bit further away from me than she did on my other side but that's okay and I brought her in and give her a big fuss and again that stick to me game and that was a good responsive stop And that was good. She start, was getting ready to trot before I asked. She knew I was going to ask for it. And you could see I was a bit apprehensive to start with. I wasn't sure whether she was coming with me or not. And that was a very good one. You see I'm walking really slowly again. Getting her to disengage her hindquarters. Because I know her mind's not quite in it. She's just sort of aimlessly wandering. And we've kind of turned it into a bit of a circle now. So I just kept her in the walk because you can see how slowly her mind's going by how sort of almost sluggishly she's walking. She's walking like really stiff. And she does that when she's anxious, not necessarily anxious, but when she's like unsure and she's shutting down. So when she's moving, you know her brain is in the right place. And again stick to me and got her to come to me which was good now here I'm getting her to come to me and try and do a circle and as you can see I'm walking backwards because that's I'm trying to draw her to me as well as her going around and that one wasn't too bad it is really when she gets it she really gets it it's almost like a flip you've flipped a switch and she's like oh yeah I get it and she'll do it perfectly but then you can ask her to do it again and she's like I don't get it <laughs> um, until she's like really really gets it so you can see I'm like walking in a backwards circle and then her brain sort of switched on and I can ask for a little bit of trot if I ask her for trot before her brain switches on she just sideways away from you like what the hell are you doing it's really all about timing And again, I didn't feel like she could trot there, but I got her to trot towards me. You can really see her lips, <laughs> licking her lips all the time. Thinking about everything I'm asking. There we go. Getting that hindquarters to move, because she wasn't coming towards me. Again, getting the hindquarters to move, and there we go. We've got forward motion. And again, I'm sort of walking in a backwards circle, sort of drawing her to me, also disengaging her hindquarters and also trying to keep her moving. Because when she stops, <laughs> she uh, can take a little bit of going again. Because if she stops, that's because her brain has stopped. Right, so this is all one big brain teaser for her. There, she was a bit further away from me, but she came in when I asked, and I give her a treat. I'm not um, hiding the fact at all that I give treats. I give treats for good behaviour, um, especially when teaching a trick. Not necessarily all the time when they know the trick, or they know what I'm asking of them. But I use it to teach, and I use it to refine. So that was a bit dodgy, as you can see I tried to get, she trotted towards me, did like half a semicircle, and then was like, nah, don't get it. <laughs> and this is like, it's really painful to watch how she can be doing it perfectly the first few times and then she just shuts down and is like, uh, no, computer says no, don't get it. But that's just the way her brain works, and one day she will do this flawlessly like she does with all the other tricks and all the other trainings that we do <laughs> she'd had enough there she's like nope 
her brain like that's her way of saying brain overload like I can't take any more <laughs> I need to blow off some steam a sec not that she bombs around because she just doesn't she just has a little trot around and then it's like oh, okay and then usually after she does this she's actually really good You see her bending a lot more that time, which is good. You can see her walking a lot more fluidly now. It's not all stiff and rigid. She's still kind of unsure, but she's a lot more sure than she was. That one was really good for a walk. And you can see by her face that she knows she's done it right and when she trots towards me like that that's like oh my god yeah I know okay I got it I got it did I do it I got it and again there uh, I'm running backwards just to try and get her to start to trot to then try and turn it into a circle at trot didn't quite work because sometimes asking her for trot like I said can be a bit of a nightmare so I am just trying to move away from it. There we go, and try and get that trot. Then once she's in trot, I can stand still and just achieve the circle. And that is really good. And she came in and I gave her a treat because that was really, really good. And I gave her a massive fuss. And then we had a break from the circles then. We're just finishing off with some play, just getting her to follow me. <laughs> she decides nap. I'm staying here. <laughs> she was starting to get tired at this point because this session was actually really long. It was about 45 minutes, which is way longer than what I would normally do for a, a groundwork session. Um, but it only took that long because that's how long she needed to get her head around these circles. And then once she'd got her head around it, it's nice to do something that she knows just to sort of cool down and she can relax then and finish on a nice good note. Um, so her standing by the gate then was her way of saying, do you know what, mum, I'm, I'm nearly done now, I'm, I'm pretty much finished. And it's good to listen to your horses, you know, them going to the gate, you might see it as napping, but if they're doing it near, you know, after you've been training for a little while, it could just be because they're tired and that's their way of telling you. Or not necessarily even physically tired, they could just be mentally tired. And here I'm getting Mana to go back on my left, which is her bad side, and she did this perfectly. I was really impressed. She's lagging a little bit behind, but her getting her actually onto that side was good, really good. And she's walking a little bit further away from me, so I just disengage the hindquarters and get her to come towards me more. And I think we do just finish off we had a couple of circles. <laughs> you can see her face. She's so cute. I mean, I'm biased, obviously, because she's my pony. But when she knows what she's doing and she, like, knows she's done good, she looks, just gives you this look, like, oh, my God, yeah. trying to get her to trot and walk as fast as I can and that was a good trot stick to me she's only really just started doing this without the need of a line oh I've lost her a bit <laughs> she's like come on Myrna <laughs> there she is <laughs> I thought she was going to canter then. I love seeing her open up like this. It's something that she never used to do when I first got her eight years ago, or nearly nine years ago. And that 
circle was nigh on perfect. Getting that trot started and there we go she almost falls into a trot and that is the end of today's video i really hope you enjoyed if you did smash that like button and subscribe button hit the bell icon if you want to know when i upload and also comment down below what you liked what you disliked about the video and yeah i'll see you in the next one